everyone. We are from the seven group. The first, let me to introduce the members of our group. First, it consists of myself, Sila Melinia, and there is Nabila Prihatini. The third one is Nurul Kayurunisa, and the last one is Aprilia Isak. In here, we will explain about the material of detecting propaganda, starting from the devices of propaganda until to the emotion that arises from the propaganda carried out. Alright, this is the outline that we will explain in this video. As you can see, there are three devices of propaganda, plain folks, course taking, and bandwagon. And then, we will continue to explain about the relationship between the propaganda and our emotion. So, all of you can more understand about the propaganda after watching this video. Okay, no need to wait for it. Let's get started now and enjoy for watching. Okay, I'm Salmania and I will be the first to explain about the introduction of propaganda. So, what do you think of propaganda? Just remember that propaganda is not one size fits all type of thing. When you think of propaganda, you might think of World War II and Hitler, right? But propaganda is prevalent all over the globe. In general, the most easily identifiable and understandable use of propaganda is during times of war, in which victory or defeat can depend a great deal on public support. As you can see in this slide, one of the famous figures around propaganda is Edward Phelan. He helped establish the Institute of Propaganda Analysis in 1937 to educate the American public about the nature of propaganda and how to recognize propaganda devices. Phelan and his college identified the seven most common tricks of the trade used by the successful propagandists. These seven devices are called name-calling, glittering generalities, transfer, testimonial, plain false course taking, and bandwagon. These devices are designed to fool us because they appeal to our emotion rather than to our reason. The devices identified by the Institute for Propaganda Analysis were further defined by Aaron Delwichin, and on this occasion, our group will only explain three of the seven devices in propaganda. Based on what I said earlier in the outline, they are plain fools, course taking, and bandwagon. Alright, the first devices of propaganda that our group will explain is plain false. The plain false propaganda devices was another of the seven main devices identified by the IPE or Institute for a Propaganda Analysis. The plain false device is an attempt by the propagandist to convince the public that his views reflect those of the common person and that they are also working for the benefit of the common person. The propagandists will often attempt to use the accent of a specific audience, as well as using specific idioms or jokes. Okay, now let's see the picture in this slide. He is probably one of the most famous propagandists all of the time. For your information, Joseph Goebbels was the Minister of Public Enlightenment of Propaganda for the Nazi regime. He supervised all form of pro-Nazi and anti-Semitic propaganda used by the Third Reich. Maybe some of you wondering who is propagandist. This is easy. In general, a propagandist is someone who creates and or disseminates propaganda. Moreover, a propagandist is someone who actively creates propaganda material or is involved in spreading it. A propagandist might be a writer, film producer, painter, photographer, musician, or etc. Thus, the purpose of the propagandists use the plain folks device to convince the audience that the spokesperson is from humble origins, someone they can trust and who has their interests at heart. Therefore, propagandists have the speaker use ordinary language and mannerism to reach the audience and identify with their point of view. Next, I will explain some examples related to plain folks. The first, it is undeniable that we are familiar with candidates who campaign as a political outsiders, promising to clean out the barn and set the things straight in the country. We are no longer shocked by the sight of politicians in denim who listen to rock and roll. For example, as you can see, the propaganda that Bill Clinton is doing is like eating at McDonald's or Ronald Reagan chopping wood. It helps to make the candidates seem down to earth and all American. 
Furthermore, let's look at the picture about Walmart display. Why is it an example of an ad making use of the Playbook devices? Well, because the mother-child duo with a shopping cart is the perfect example of regular folks indulging in regular activity. Yes, it allowed thousands of other women to see themselves in that picture. Moreover, the they advertised by saying save money live better it gave the mission of saving money through buying groceries from them and utilizing the savings to improve the quality and other aspect of life this strong message attracts a lot of customer and a celebrity image could not have delivered it then we can say this is the perfect image to be able to manipulate the people who see the image displayed by Walmart. In all of the examples, the plain folks device is at work. Hello guys, I am Nabila Prihatini. I will continue this presentation. This is card stacking. It proves the selection and use of facts and falsehoods, illustration or distraction and logical or illogical statement to give the best or the worst possible case for an idea, program, person, or product. Propagandist uses this technique to make the best case possible for his side and the worst for the opposing viewpoints by carefully using only those facts that support his or her side of the argument while attempting to lead the audience into accepting the facts as a conclusion. From a business standpoint, cut staking propaganda is a way to manipulate information so that one product looks better than another. Okay, this is example of card staking for the first is Oreo. This Oreo is advertised as a sugar-free food and if in the bottom zero gram trans fat however the fda food and drug administration defines sugar as a sucrose which means that artificial sweeteners that resemble sugar in terms of health effects and taste can be called no fat okay the second example is sign chips this ad uses starts to portray why the product is healthy it implies that sun chips are better than regular chips because they contain 30% less fat than say chips. Okay, the last example is Burger King chips. The advertisers of this fast food giant use terms like 30% viewer calories to advertise their fries. It is unclear that the amount of calories in their fries is lesser than whom. Hello everybody, my name is Nurul Heronisa and here I want to explain more about bandwagon. So what is a bandwagon about? The bandwagon appeal emphasizes that everyone else is doing it and so should you. Since few of us want to be left behind, this technique can be quite successful. However, as the EPA point out, there is never quite as much of a rush to cling onto the bandwagon as the propagandist tries to make us think there is. And propagandists use this technique to persuade the audience to follow the code. This device creates the impressions of widespread to be on the winning side. It also plays on feeling, loneliness, and isolation. Or, simply, we can say the bandwagon is a propagandist cognitive bias from the writers to make audience and reader do what the writers want and change the public opinion to follow belief, style, trend, product from the writers. So, and what the effect from the bandwagon? The effect from the bandwagon is a psychological phenomenon in which people do something primarily because other people are doing it regardless of their own beliefs which they may ignore or override this tendency of people to align their belief and behavior which those of a group it's also called a um, herd mentality the term bandwagon effect originates from politics but has wide implications commonly by seeing consumer behavior and investment activities this phenomenon can be seen during bull market and the growth of asset bubbles 
this example about a pay wagon in McDonald's. McDonald's, over 99 billion served. This is a classic Penwagon propaganda advertising example. After all, if they've served 99 billion, there must be something special there, right? And who would want to miss out on that? So, instead of just driving past and honoring no fast food promise you make to yourself, you stop and grab a meal on your way home. Advertisers know that is a human's nature to not want it left. They know that if they convince you that everyone else is buying their product and using their service, you will want to jump on the bandwagon too. Okay, the second example about the bandwagon is on Oral-B product. Here, Australia youth made this voyage. Over a million Australians have already tried Oral-B toothpaste. A million of your countrymen have treated toothpaste by this brand. This advertisement is obviously targeted towards Australians. Don't you feel left out? Well, if you hadn't before, you do after you see this ad. And an oral bit of pass finds its place in your shopping cart and your next grocery trip. Oh, and this third example about the Bay Megan on the grid list. America's favorite mascara. Ooh. Maybelline is well known for its mascara and the company released a bold statement about why this product has become so popular. They claim that it's because of how America's favorite was created using patriotism in their marketing campaigns as if to say we love America so much more than other countries do. So this is a propagandist of the product. Okay, next, propaganda appears in a variety of four form and uses common technique to successfully influence people, including activating strong emotion, responding to audience need, and value simplifying information and ideas attack component. For example, emotional words: "Don't let your love one more, more, more for you." The audience is meant to connect its positive emotion for loved ones to the idea of surrendering to the enemy in order to spare its loved one pain, not from a leaflet distributed by the North Korean army, encouraging American soldiers to surrender. 1. Activating strong emotion Propaganda play on human emotion, fear, hope, anger, frustration, sympathy on direct audience toward the desired goal. In the deepest senses, propaganda is a main game the skillful propagandists exploit a people's fear and prejudices. Successfully, propagandists understand how to the psychologically Tailor message, so repeat message to people emotion in order to create a sense of excitement and arousal that suppress the critical thinking. Two, responding to audience need and value. Propaganda may use uh, accurate and truthful information or half truth opinions, lie and falsehood. Successful propaganda tells simple story that are familiar and trusted. Often using metaphor, image, and repetition to make the seem natural or true. Okay, number three, simplifying information and ID. Effective propaganda convey a message, theme, and language the apple. Apple, I'm sorry appeal directly and many times as exclusively to specific and distinct a, and distinct a group within a population propagandists may appeal to you as a member of a family or your racial of ethnic identity identity or even your hobby your favorite celebrities, your belief and value, or 
even your personal aspiration and hope the future. Number four, attacking opponents. Propaganda can serve as your form of political and social warfare to identify and and vilify opponents. It can call into into question in the legitimacy, credibility, accuracy, and even the character of one opponent opponents and their ID. Attacking opponents also incorrect. Either or, or use them, attacking which sub presses the consideration of more complex information and ID. In conclusion, basically, propaganda is an integral part of political and social life that is inherent in many forms of human communication. Propaganda devices are used all of the time, but we often don't recognize them. We are going to see how they are used in advertising to get us to buy products and we will see how some influential people use propaganda when giving speeches. Furthermore, calls upon the consumer to make decisions based on the feeling rather than facts. Ads that try to make you feel joy, sadness, empathy, and etc. So, We can conclude that propaganda work only because they appeal to our emotions, not to our minds. Thus, it is important to detect it and understand how it is used. They are the references that we use in making material of detecting propaganda. We hope our explanation of detecting propaganda has been helpful in general and all of you can enjoy the more understand about it. Last but not least, we want to say thank you so much for your attention. So, ciao, adios, I'm done.